Welcome to this tutorial in which we will be going through a little bit of how you can add an actor to another actor. Um, let's just jump into it and I'll show you what I mean. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So here we have essentially what we will be creating in this tutorial. Uh, we have this weapon attached to this character and we're doing this differently. We're not uh, attaching a mesh directly to the character. We don't have a component or anything like that. We have instead attached this as an actor to this actor or rather we have put the actor in the hierarchy of the components. And in addition to that and showing how we are uh, able to manipulate this object if we want to, we have also put in some very basic code to communicate with the, the hammer. In this case, we can press our E key, which will activate the particle effect on the hammer and it would have worked on any kind of other weapon class that we would have chosen if we wanted to. And if we feel really cool with our hammer, we can also go break a door. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.26. So let me describe a little bit what I'm talking about, because if we open up our third person character, for example, uh, what we have in many previous tutorials is we have been working with components. We add components to our character to have certain functionality available to it so that it can do certain things. It can be anything from character movement components to cameras to meshes to basically anything. Um, however, sometimes you might want to feel like uh, I want an actor in my actor. Uh, and there are ways to do that. You are able to do that. If you go to add component and you type in child, you get something called a child actor. You can see a component that spawns an actor when registered and destroys it when unregistered. And now currently it became subservient to the mesh here, which is fine because that's what I had marked when I created it apparently. And how this works is if you check the details tab now here, we can see we have some things available to us. We have a child actor component grouping over here. In it, we can choose a child act actor class. And if we drop down here, you can see that we have pretty much any class, actor class in, in the engine available to us. Now, how this can be used is really up to you. Uh, one example of how you could use this is that you could have a weapon, for example. So if we create a blueprint class for a weapon, we call it uh, BP weapon. And let's say that this weapon has a skeletal mesh in it. Now I happen to have the Infinity Blade uh, projects installed on this one. So I can choose a hammer here, for example. And now I have this nifty hammer in this blueprint. And this is essentially now my weapon blueprint and all is good and fine. Now I can go to my child actor in my third person character and I can say, I want to have my BP weapon class, if I spell it correctly. There, compile and save. And you can look now and you can see that I actually have this weapon available to my character now. And if I wanted to, I could also uh, do something like choose a parent socket and I can choose something like, I don't think we have a socket here, but we can get something close enough. Uh, nope. So if we type in hand and type in R, we get not, not quite where we want to hold a, a hammer, but, but close enough. So now you can see that we have an actor inside of an actor. Um, and when we have selected a class, we also have the instance variable available to it. Now, I didn't reveal any here, but if we were to go here and say, for example, that we wanted to have a fancy variable and we click to expose, expose it. So it's instance editable up here now, compile and save. Going back to our character now, we have in our child actor when it's marked, we can now go to the default grouping 
and we can see that our exposed variable is available to us. We could click that here if we wanted to, or any other variables that we expose. Now, in addition to this, you might want to, at some point, interact with or do something or communicate with this um, child actor that you now have in your class. That is not maybe as straightforward as one would think, because if we were to say that we wanted to um, make a keyboard E event here. So when, when we press E here, we want to say, we want to, oh, I don't know. Um, that's, we can, we can set our variable. Uh, so we may go like, okay, so this is a child actor of the type BP weapon. So we type in cast and you see nothing appears. Uh, the reason for this is the class inside of here is of the type BP weapon, which is an actor. However, the reference that we have here is of the type child actor component object reference. So to get the actual class that is inside of this child actor component, we can type in get child actor. Now this on the other hand is the actual actor that we are working with. So if we wanted now we could cast to BP, did I not call it hammer? I call it weapon and to make sure that that works we can print out a, a hello when that happens so we go in here we play we press okay I have some debug stuff let me get rid of that my apologies I was showcasing something earlier here in this project so uh, yes jumping in again we can now press E and you can see that it types out hello so we're able to cast and it identifies the object here fine so that's, that's all good and nice. So this is an important step if you want to um, communicate with your child actor. However, you might not always know what kind of a class is inside this child actor. You might, for example, be determining that dynamically in runtime. To demonstrate this, we can go back here to our actorception. We can create a child blueprint class. We can say, actually, let's make a completely, because we can still cast this to BP weapons. And uh, to show this, we want to delete this. And we duplicate this instead. And we say that this is the BP sword or something like that. And to make it clear, we go here and we choose something that is a sword. So SK sword, compile, save. Okay. So now, if we were to say that we had set our uh, child actor, we can set our child actor class over here. So we could, for example, have done something like this. And at some point we have made it a sword of the class sword. And then when we try to cast it to uh, a hammer it should not work because it's no longer the class that we are expecting it to be right so pressing e now you can see that it says fail and you can also see that it has uh, put the sword in our hand there so you may not always know what kind of a class you actually have in here and this is a point where it is actually good to uh, make use of uh, blueprint interfaces for example because maybe you have something fancy maybe you have like a uh, some code you want to call in your weapon or maybe you have some kind of cool effect or something like that so then you could create a blueprint interface and let's go to blueprints blueprint interface we'll call this bpi weapon activate and inside of that we'll just create a weapon activate function like so and now we want to make use of this so regardless if we have the sword or the hammer we might have a functionality in here that allows us to activate either of these so sending in weapon activate now to this as a message we don't really need to know what kind of class it is we don't need to cast it to something it should work regardless so going to 
our weapon we can now implement this so we go to our weapon for example we implement the epi weapon activate interface and then we actually implement that event over here to showcase something really simple we can just do a spawn particle system attached we can say that it should attach to the skeletal mesh component and then we can choose the template i have some infinity blade particle systems here there's one called terra drain i believe yeah so let's see what that looks like so now we essentially have we have our hammer we press the e key it calls on the blueprint interface which allows it to play which might not be super clear but there's some swirly stuff going around now it's coming from the actual uh, location of where the the hand is but you could have had it in some other place along the hammer if you wanted to as well so uh, now it doesn't really need to know what kind of a class it is if we were to hold the sword we haven't implemented the, the interface there but nothing would break and it would be fine and we could implement a completely different uh, effect in that one if we wanted to as well and everything would be fine like so so that is in short essence how you can make use of and how you would communicate with uh, an actor inside of an actor i hope all of that made sense and that this is useful to you hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.